Hey man, you looking to make some reductions? If you're looking for some recipes to tighten up your bod, watch this video. If you need to tighten up your web presence, consider its sponsor, Squarespace. To get 10% off your first website with Squarespace, use my link and code in the description. Let's state right off the bat that I am neither a medical nor nutritional professional, and you absolutely should consult such a person before trying to change your body in any significant way. What I am is merely a guy who has a little bit too much experience making rapid course corrections to his body composition. I'm in the early stages of such a course correction as we speak. The first recipe I'll show you is what I do to support my exercise regimen, which is generally strength training that I do in my dungeon basement gym. I never sweep it. The bug parts make me feel like I'm Rocky in Rocky IV. Oh! I don't do anything fancy, squats, pull-ups, simple pressing. I've found strength training to be far more effective than cardio when it comes time for me to slim down a little bit. There's a lot of research as to why that might be the case, but everybody is different. Muscle growth requires protein, and I usually go with tilapia, which is hardly my favorite fish to eat, but I choose it for three reasons. One, it is cheap. Two, it is not full of mercury, which is a problem with a lot of fish. And three, it's pretty sustainable as seafood goes. When I'm doing my normal cooking and eating, I honestly don't consider any of these three factors as often as I should, in part just because I eat a pretty varied diet, and so if I'm eating something bad, at least I'm not eating very much of it. But for bodybuilding style meal prep, which is really what this is, I'm gonna be eating the same exact thing in large quantities every day for several weeks. And when I'm doing that, there's a chance that if I pick the wrong food, I could do some serious damage to my wallet, my body, or my biosphere. Regarding the latter consideration, a great resource to always consult is seafoodwatch.org, which is a service of the Monterey Bay Aquarium in California. They tell you exactly how sustainable a fish is depending on where you live and where it came from. In fact, I just noticed that this tilapia that I've been buying is actually farmed in Mexico, which only gets a middle grade in terms of sustainability. I need to find some from Ecuador or Peru. I buy almost all my seafood frozen solid. That looks familiar. But yeah, I buy almost all my fish frozen. Modern flash freezing processes cause virtually no quality degradation. And when I cook this particular meal, I don't bother thawing the fish. I just put on a little bit of olive oil, salt, and pepper, and I throw the fish in my oven at 350 Fahrenheit, 180C. The results of this taste surprisingly good, which is what got me interested in cooking frozen solid meat in my non-diet recipes. What bodybuilders eat with their lean protein is usually some kind of carbohydrate, usually rice, to fuel their workouts. But when I'm trying to slim down, I go virtually zero carb on my meals. That does not mean I'm doing a zero carb diet. Here's the philosophy I've developed for myself over the years. Carbs are gonna happen. Shit happens, carbs happen. I'm gonna go out to eat with my family. I'm gonna go over to friends' houses. I'm just gonna eat whatever they eat. I don't wanna be that guy who's like, oh no, I can't have that, I'm on my diet. I'm gonna sneak some chocolate every now and then. It's going to happen. I'm still gonna have a couple of beers every now and then. That's going to happen. Carbs gonna happen. So I figure if I go virtually zero carb on my planned meals, I'm gonna end up eating a moderate carb diet once real life gets mixed. In. And at my age, with my body, I find that if I just kind of cut my carbohydrates in half and exercise, I lose weight. So what do I have with my fish instead of rice? Cauliflower rice. Honestly, I usually just buy it frozen in bags, but I'm gonna try to make cauliflower rice from scratch this time. You just cut a cauliflower into florets, and then you throw a few of them at a time into a food processor, and as I feared, you have to cut them into smaller chunks first. Otherwise, they just spin around. Damn. So you gotta keep doing this until you've got the whole thing blended up into little grains. I'm doing two full heads. I'm gonna be honest with you, this kitchen smells like farts right now. All those sulfur compounds getting released. And it's messy. I think I might just keep using the frozen bags when you're not looking. But anyway, I'll just put some olive oil and some salt in there, turn on the heat, and the pieces are so fine that you just have to cook this for like five minutes. That pot is so full of water that it basically steams itself. Cooking is essential, not only for palatability, but for digestibility. My fish looks done. It's opaque, it flakes easily, it's done. Hey, that looks familiar. I'll just dump that over my cauliflower rice and I've got my protein meals for almost a week. At this stage, honest to God, that actually tastes pretty good. Like if I did a better job plating that, I could pass that off as a real recipe. I just let the pot cool down, lit it up, and throw the whole thing into the fridge. Even when I'm dieting, I try to eat whenever I'm hungry. And whenever I'm hungry, I just pull out that pot and dig in. I don't heat it up. As it gets more than a couple days old, a nice squeeze of lemon really freshens up the taste. I gotta say, making that cauliflower rice was a pain, but it tastes delicious. It's sweet. 
So yeah, I'll eat a little bit of that three or four times a day. I also do some protein shakes, just whey protein isolate, and once a day I mix in some creatine powder. Creatine is arguably the only legal strength training supplement that's worth a damn. But back to whey protein for a sec. A 2018 study found pretty disturbing amounts of heavy metals, arsenic, and BPA in some popular protein powders. Again, that's not the kind of thing I worry about too often unless it's a food I'm gonna eat over and over and over again, which this is. So I'm always sure to buy the good ones on this list. It's linked in the description. All right, I'm gonna show you one more thing that I always cook for myself when it's time to reduce, and it's one of my favorite things to eat anytime, and it's just my simple vegetable soup. I have a whole video about that, it's linked in the description, but here's the latest version of that soup I've made for myself. I always start with some kind of onion. I get these green Vidalia onions all the time because I live near the Vidalia region of Georgia, which is famed for its onions. I just clank those up along with a big carrot, and then I get them boiling in some water. Just water, not stock. It really makes the most delicious veggie soup. Now that I've got the hardest things cooking, I will clank up a tomato or two, skins and all. Great nutrition in the skins and their pectins thicken the broth. No, the white wine isn't really in my diet plan, but it's not that much proportionally and it tastes real good. When those veggies are at least half cooked, I will then throw in some kind of cabbage or kale, ideally a crinkly kind, and then when that's tender, some fresh chopped garlic right at the end. Plenty of salt, a little pepper, a dash of vinegar, because I like my food more acidic than you probably do, and then frozen peas. They'll thaw in the residual heat. Raw olive oil in the bowl to aid the digestion of fat-soluble vitamins, and also because it's insanely delicious, and a little fresh herb, that's thyme. I do not have to choke that down. I would happily eat that every day, and I will until my pan Pants fit comfortably again, because I don't want to buy all new pants. However, if you're going to introduce this many cruciferous vegetables into your diet all at once, you might want to think about taking a supplement containing the enzyme alpha-galactosidase. Things like cabbage and cauliflower and beans contain very large sugars that your body can't digest. Thus, they pass to your lower intestine, where they are then metabolized by all of the microorganisms that live in your gut. And when microorganisms metabolize sugars, we all know what they create. So yeah, the enzyme breaks down the sugars so that your body can digest them before the bugs in your gut do. Take some of this stuff when you're gonna have your vegetable soup. Your friends and family will thank you. One other funny thing I do to keep myself eating clean is to brush and floss a lot. I think a big reason why I crave sweets is because I have bad tastes in my mouth, especially after eating meals. So good oral hygiene takes that issue off the table. I also take a multivitamin and a fish oil supplement. Now, if you've never successfully dropped weight before, I do think I have one more word of wisdom for you, and it's about the second heart hardest part of losing weight. The hardest part of losing weight is keeping it off, but everybody knows that. Lord, don't I know that. The second hardest part is getting started. But if you can push through the pain of the first week or so, it really gets a lot easier after that. It's kind of like an avalanche. You just sort of get it going and then it really goes itself. You're gonna see results, you're gonna feel invested, and you're gonna sincerely want to keep going until you have met your goals. And if your goals include hanging a shingle on the internet, Squarespace is literally all you need. They have done your meal prep for you. Whether you're losing weight for your wedding, or to look cool in your band photo, or to get a job. Because yes, research shows that people absurdly are more likely to hire skinny people. Squarespace has a website template that can help you with any of these endeavors, and they're beautiful. They look great on mobile, you just fly in your own pictures and your own words, then Squarespace will host the site for you. They can handle all the monetary transactions if you're selling stuff on your site. They can even register a custom domain for you. And you can save 10% on that domain, or or on the publication of your first site by going to squarespace.com slash You'll be doing us both a favor. All right, I'm getting back in the squat rack.